I am sitting with an icon, a true Hollywood action master. I'm here with Mr. Steven Lambert. How are you, my friend? I'm fine. Awesome, awesome. Let me take this off. Sure. The mask from Revenge of the Ninja. I was getting ready to ask you that. Yes. Can you talk about it for a moment? There were two made uh, in Revenge of the Ninja. Um, the one, Arthur, the lead actor, um, used it. He used it in two little shots. Okay. One at the beginning when he puts it on and one at the end where Shokazuki splits it in half, revealing that it's Arthur. Okay. Um, that, of course, was thrown away. Uh, this one was held by me all this time. And uh, luckily, I talked to uh, Michael Matsuda uh, from the uh, Hollywood Martial Art Museum, and he's going to take it in, give oh, it a good home, nice, which I'm nice. very thankful for. Can I, can I hold Absolutely. it for just a second? That is, oh, wait, you had to wear this thing? The it was in those days, wow. uh, this is the way they made the masks. Uh. You know, today, like Spider-Man, they would make it out of, uh, you know, thin rubber yeah. material. Yeah, that's kind of heavy. Easy. But for two months I wore this, and it was miserable. How many hours a day? I had to wear this for two months, uh, anywhere from six, ten hours a day. It was mir miserable. Every time I uh, worked with Shokazuki, whatever fight scene, whatever action scene there was, I couldn't look at him off my peripherals. I had to look straight ahead. So if you ever notice in the movie, whenever I'm fighting him, yeah. I would look directly towards him before we started whatever piece of action we had. It's very difficult to wear. I want to go back, because you, you've got so many great stories, and I want to get into them. But what I want to first ask is, how did you get your start in film and television? Uh, I had no idea I was getting into the movie business. Uh, I was uh, competing in my very last tournament, uh, BKF tournament, Black Karate uh, Federation. Federation. Sure. And uh, I took second in three divisions, uh, weapons, fighting, and hand forms. Uh, three second place trophies. And as I was leaving, some casting people came over to me and they were Chuck Norris's casting people. Now Chuck and I have uh, known each other for a long time. He used to judge me when I was a ch kid. Chuck wasn't there, but they came over to me and they asked me, how would you like to be in a movie? Mm -hmm. And I looked at them like they were crazy. I didn't know what they were talking about. I had no idea. Movie business, stunt business, had no aspirations of getting in it. I was going to college, going to be a cop. And uh, I said, what do you mean? What do you want me to do? Movie. You know, well, it's with Chuck Norris. It's called Good Guys Wear Black. And I said, I, I don't know. He go, they go, I'll pay you $300 under the table. And $300 under the table, cash, in those days when I was a kid, you know, you'd have to work three, four weeks sure. to make that money. And I said, sure. So the, uh, the uh, movie was being shot, that piece that they wanted me to work on was being shot at uh, the airport, LAX. Okay. So I went there went on the set, and uh, I looked at, there was about 25, 30 stunt guys there, doing all kinds of things, fights, crashes, car stuff, and I was amazed. And I said, this is what I want to do. I was always an athlete when I was a kid. In sixth grade, I won uh, the John F. Kennedy Award for the best physical fitness in school. So, you know, I was always somewhat of a monkey. Okay. You know, an yeah. athletic monkey. Okay. So when I saw that and I worked on it, you know, Chuck beat me up, I fall on, on the um, a luggage rack of the airport, the moving luggage rack, okay. and that was the end. And uh, that's how I more or less got into the business. So now you're, you're into it. You are now officially a stuntman and also coordinating. Now I know you did Remo Williams and you yes. doubled Fred Ward. Yes. What, what was that like? That was a great experience. I just got finished doing American Ninja One. About a week before, I got a call from uh, Glenn Randall who was the second unit director, stunt coordinator, asked me if I wanted to do Remo. Um, the plan was over at Canon Films that I was going to do American Ninja 2, 3, 4, whatever else. It was my home. I was like a family there then, okay. part of their family. family. Okay. So I wanted to change. I mean, after three Ninja pictures and, and uh, six other pictures I did for Canon, I wanted to move on. I, I kind of had enough of martial arts for that time. And even though Remo Williams had martial arts, it gave me other things to do. There were many other things. So I went to Sam Furstenberg and called up Menachem Golan at Canon Films and I explained to him that I'm moving on. Uh, they weren't too happy I because I was like family. Right. You right. know, but I did it 
and I moved on to uh, Remo Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very exciting. You know, I, I had won uh, two uh, stunt awards. Oh, nice. Uh, one of them was for Remo Williams' Best High Work. You know, I was the first stunt guy to ever perform and to be allowed on the Statue of Liberty. Wow. To perform stunts. That's impressive. So that was a great experience, a memorable experience. Um, there were things uh, on that uh, movie that uh, were challenging, yeah. were terrific, and uh, that show was just fantastic. It really catapulted me. Stay tuned for more Hollywood Action Masters. Now, are you going to give me answers, or what? Your adversaries are Yakuza. Their leader is a rogue Shaolin monk. Only true Shaolin training can defeat him. You have all the answers you need. Except one. How is it that you are here? Deborah son, you Deborah already. Son, you already. <laughs> Enjoying your stay in town? Having a blast. Universal Cosmos, the Black Ninja. Through the winter, summer, spring, fall. An epidemic affects kids in every school in America. Stay down, punk! And for Robbie Oaks. Hey, hey! After some bad choices. Grandma, it's not as bad as it looks. Here we go again, Robbie! Time to start making some better choices, kids. You'll find a new home. Mikasa Sukasa. And come face to face with the biggest challenge of his life. I'm Robbie. I'm Rena. Bully. I'm talking to my girl. Hey, 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 take it easy, Dan. Man, that hurt as much as it looks. You see the other guy. Well, can't use his fist for a week. You better come up with a plan for self defense. What? You think some guy trying to act tough scares me? This okay. Yeah, a little bit. Where did you learn all that Haya uh, ninja stuff? Cindy, I don't think this is going to work. You should bring him into martial arts school. Teach him discipline. Be the father figure for him. Put him on a positive path. You know, you can wash on, wash off all you want, but you're not going to be driving any of our cars. Catherine Newton. You have a really good form. What? Star of Paranormal Activity 4. I didn't know martial arts could be this much fun. Jensen Panettiere of The Perfect Game and Ice Age. Yeah. Don the Dragon Wilson, 11-time world kickboxing champion. Cynthia Rothrock, five-time world forms and weapons champ. We don't tolerate bullies here. Chuck Zito of True Lies. Nobody disrespects me in my dojo. And TJ Storm, Black Cobra. Honor. How traditional. In the motion picture, the film's charity partner, Bullying, We're Kicking It, exclaims, this is a socially responsible movie that every family in America should see together. Martial arts. <gasps> To protect yourself, yeah, protect others. I told him that. The Martial Arts Kid, coming soon. Every day, I wake up as a new day to prove myself. It's a new day to show the world that I am here. Some say I couldn't do it, that I wasn't a big enough man to knock through the barriers in front of me. They thought I was a pushover.
but I'm part of a tradition. I am a warrior. And that tradition carries me through this day and the next. Hi, I'm Richard Norton, and you're watching Hollywood Action Masters. Now, back to our show. Welcome back to Hollywood Action Masters. I'm sitting with Stephen Lambert. Now, during the break, you talked to me and you shared some things with me about Bruce Lee, about Dragon, you know, this, the Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Um, Bruce Lee was one of my favorites. My I mean, I grew up on Bruce Lee. Could you share with us? That was a pure delight how that happened, how I uh, got that. Uh, I was doing a picture uh, called The Hard Way. James Woods and Michael J. Fox. Conrad Palmisano was a stunt coordinator. I was doubling James Woods. And the second unit uh, director and uh, producer was a guy named Rob Cohn. And uh, there was a dream sequence in there where Michael J. Fox had to uh, play Indiana Jones and he fights a bunch of ninjas. The dream sequence. And Conrad asked me to put together a sequence. So I went, got Michael J. Fox, got a bunch of stunt guys, played ninjas, put together a fight sequence. Well, Rob Cohn didn't know I was a martial artist. He knew I was a stunt guy, but he didn't know I was a martial artist. So after I put together this uh, uh, dream sequence um, uh, and uh, they put it all together, uh, a few days later, Rob Cohn came up to me and uh, said, hey, I'm doing a martial art movie after this picture is over. Would you be interested in it? And I said, sure. You know, had no idea what was going on, but I said yes. So uh, we went on, finished the hard way. A few months later, I get a call from the production office, Rob Cohn's production office, and he said, hey, Steve, it's Rob Cohn. Come on in. I want, you to talk, I want to talk to you about this martial art movie. So I went down, meet him at Universal, and uh, we started talking. And he said, it was the dragon, the life story of Bruce Lee. Well, I, I stood back, you know, in my head, I'm going, Wow, me? Yeah. The Dragon, Bruce Lee, terrific. Yes, I'll do it right. in a New York second. Right. Yes. So he goes, uh, I tell you what, I got three guys in mind. I want you to uh, take these three guys individually and work with them for a week, a um, couple of days each, and uh, tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. So uh, I, uh, I set it up. Right? First guy, I don't recall the name, but I tested him, practiced with him, had conversations with him. Second guy, I did the same thing. And then it came to Jason Scott Lee. Okay. Uh, started training him, and he had that something special in him. Never took martial arts before in his life. 
he had one year of gymnastics in high school, wow. you know. But we trained, and there was something about him, you know, something that told me that he was the guy, yeah. you know. We were practicing, you know, he wasn't very good at the time, you know, but he had the potential, right. you know, and he had the look. Mm -hmm. So uh, after it was over, I had a meeting with Rob Cohen, and I said, Rob, I said, I think Jason's the guy. And he goes, what makes you think that? Mm -hmm. And I explained what I told you, mm -hmm. you know. And he literally said, okay, we're going to use Jason. Wow. He goes, and this is a true story. Yeah. And he goes, now what we have to do, I don't have the money yet, Rob said. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. I don't have the money yet, right? So what the Black Tower wants, the big boys mm -hmm. in Universal, they want to see a screen test. They want to see a fight with Jason to see if he's capable of doing it. So I want you to train Jason for three months and give him the ability so he can play Bruce Lee. Yeah. So I said, okay, fine. So for three months, six days a week, seven hours a day, we trained, not only physically, but mentally. Mm -hmm. Got all of Bruce's films, uh, got his interviews, you know, and like we were talking about before, we all love Bruce. Right. I mean, when Enter the Dragon came out, you know, I think the first day I saw it 10 times. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We imitated yeah, yeah. him. You know, we idolized yeah, him, you yeah. know, back then. Yeah. You know, so uh, we went on and uh, I put together a fight. And uh, it was Jason playing Bruce and me playing the bad guy. Okay. Right? So we went to Chinatown and one of my grand ma masters who was... Doug Wong's master, a guy named Ark Wong, okay. right? Mm -hmm. He had passed away. But I had knew, I, I knew that his family, Ark Wong's family, still kept his dojo, his school intact, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, for history. Because sure. it was there for 50 years, sure. you know. So I went and I had a talk with his family, Ark Wong's family. Can we use this for this, mm -hmm. right? So we put together the fight scene. Rob Cohn shot it. He directed it. I was the fight coordinator. And I played the lead bad guy. And uh, we shot it. Rob brought it to, and Rob and I edited it together. Rob brought it to the Black Tower, the big boys, and they saw it. And they said yes, right? So that's how we went on to do wow. the dragon. Now, so now after... I trained him for three months after they accepted Jason, right? I decided that I wanted something more mm -hmm. for Jason, mm -hmm. you know? This is Bruce we're talking about, right. right? So I had a meeting with Rob Cohen and I said, you know, I want something more for him, you know? I want to be able to take Jason, you know? I want him to get to feel the roots, what was inside of Bruce, mm -hmm. right? So I told Rob Cohen, I said, is it possible to talk to Linda Lee? You know, I want to find some people that knew Bruce, yeah. right? So, so he goes, absolutely. You know, because I wanted him to meet him, sure. to get the essence. Sure. You know, because I believe anybody who's worked with Bruce, you know, they, they know Bruce, they know the feeling. They can have a conversation right. with Jason. Right. Things that I can't have a conversation with him about. Right. Not only mentally talking to him, but physically, right? right? So... I made a phone call to Linda in uh, Rob Cohn's office, and uh, we had a conversation. And Linda gave me some people. Jerry Bastilio, who was one of Bruce's black belts. Ted Wong, Bruce's back black belt. Herb Jackson, mm -hmm. Bob Wall, um, Jerry Petit. Let's see if I'm missing anybody. Um, those are the guys. And I decided to bring Doug Wong into it. That was my decision mm -hmm. because he was my master, mm -hmm. one who taught me, sure. right? So I had him and Danny Inosanto, mm. right? Can't forget him. Yeah, can't. Can't! No. Shame on me. <laughs> but I didn't. So uh, she gave me those names, right? So I called each one of them. And Ted agreed to teach. Jerry Bastille agreed to teach. And Jerry Petit agreed to teach. And 
Bob Wall and Danny Onisanto agreed to have a conversation. Hmm. They didn't want to teach, right. right? But what Bob Wall did give me is mainly, because he didn't know, they didn't know about the movie. They weren't sure yet, sure. right? So they didn't want to take a chance. Sure. And all those people were very close to Bruce. Sure. But, but Bob and Danny, you know, just had this frame of mind that, that I'll talk to Jason, but we won't teach. Mm -hmm. But Herb and Jerry and Ted and uh, uh, Jerry Bastilio and Jerry, uh, um, Jerry Petit uh, said yes, train him and talk to him, wow. right? So uh, we went on, had four or five lessons with Ted Wong, with Jerry Bastilio, uh, um, and uh, it was wonderful. The mm. conversation uh, went on with Bob Wall and Danny Inasato. It was beautiful because I wanted Jason you know, to talk to people and to train with people who, who Bruce trained and talked to. Right. To me, that was very important. It was yeah. part of his training, yeah. right? So that happened. You know, those guys had conversation with him. Those, some of those guys trained him. Right. So it was wonderful. Right. Well, after that, we went on, right? I continued training Jason until the movie started. But during that training, after the fact, I got a call from Rob Cohn. And Rob Cohn said, uh, we're having some problems. What are the problems? I'm getting letters from people all over the world. Who is this guy? Who is this stunt guy who is doing the Bruce Lee story? Uh, right? Yeah. Uh, not that they didn't know my ability, they didn't know what I've done. You know, they just didn't like the idea because they didn't know, right? Yeah. Who is this guy, stunt guy, going to do the Bruce Lee story? Right. You know, how dare you? Yeah. We get, we're getting all kinds of letters. Mm. Didn't want it to happen. Mm. So Rob had a fantastic idea. He goes, I'll bring in Linda Lee and I'll bring in Brendan, you know, his son. Yeah. Right? I have worked with Brendan already. Yeah. I did uh, uh, Kung Fu The New Generation, yeah. where, where David Carradine wasn't Kwai Chen Kane. You know, another guy played Kwai Chen Kane, but Brendan played his son. Right. right? So I had already knew Brendan because I worked with and I doubled Brendan in that movie, in that TV series. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so Rob set up the meeting and uh, you know, I walk in to meet Linda Lee. I'm all excited, you know, I'm meeting Linda Lee. You know, that's great. Big bouquet of flowers I bring in, you know, give it to her. She, she thanks me, you know. We sit down in a private office, have a conversation for two hours, right? Now, in my head, before we had this conversation, days before, you know, this is what I think, I'm thinking, this is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to, you know how you right. prepare yourself sure. yeah. always, yeah. you know? When we had this meeting, the conversation was nothing like I thought of in my head, mm -hmm. you know. She started asking me about my life, my personal life, my young childhood and all that, and uh, which threw me for a loop. But I, I always try to tell the truth. I tell the truth, my, my childhood and all that. And at the end of this two hours, she looked at me and she goes, and it was a quote, I'll never forget this, your childhood was a lot like Bruce's. Oh, wow. It's a true story. Wow. You're going to do the movie, right? And that was fantastic. Two hour meeting, it was fantastic. And then next day, Brendan knew me, but he didn't recognize the name. So I walked into the office, right? As soon as I walked into the office and he saw me, he goes, I know Steve, uh, you know? Uh, and then he said yes, uh, because he knew, because I had doubled him on an episode. Sure. And uh, worked on a TV series. Mike Vangelo was doing a TV series, Kung Fu The New Generation. Sure. And, uh, and that's how that happened. So that's how I got Bruce, only because of Linda and Brendan. Well, thank you for doing that. Oh. Because you brought something great. Oh, God bless film you. Film and television. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you.